This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, what does the export scale slider do inside of ZBrush? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and this is an excellent question. So down here in the bottom of the tool palette, you have this scale slider right here. And this is going to determine at what values your model is going to be exported out in. So this is going to take this scale slider and it's going to do a mathematical process based on the size of your model. And it's going to spit out a file, say an OBJ, with those values in it. So before we start getting into the process of what this is controlling, let's first talk about the OBJ file format. So the OBJ file format and the STL file format do not contain any unit values. So they just have arbitrary units. So here I just have two cubes that I export out as OBJs. Now you can open any OBJ file into a text editor and you can see the information in it. So here are just these two five inch cubes exported out from 3D Studio Max. Now, if you look at these files here, you're gonna notice there's no information on any units. So nothing in here says this is millimeters, nothing in here says this is inches. It's just these arbitrary values. So these cubes obviously have different numbers in here. So this one I exported out in generic units that would equal millimeters. So you can see here are the X, Y, and Z values for each of these vertices. And if you add these up, you're gonna get 127. So if I import this file into an application that's system units is millimeters, it's gonna read in at the correct size. If I import this file into an application that system unit is inches, it's going to think this is 127 inches. So these file formats just have arbitrary units. And then here's the other option, which was exported out in generic units of inches. And so you can see here, this is going to give me five generic units across. So if I imported this into a program that's system units were millimeters, I'm only gonna get five millimeters instead of five inches. So this OBJ file format does not contain any information about the units. So just keep that in mind whenever you export something out. So as long as you know your applications you want to import any of these files into and what their system units are, you can control what the size of your meshes are going to be. So let's import both these models into ZBrush here. So first I'm going to import in the cube that was set to those generic units that mimicked millimeters. So I'm gonna come over here and import, and I'm gonna import in this cube. Now with this cube imported in, we're just gonna look at two things really quick. So the first one, we're gonna go to the geometry tab here. I'm gonna open this up. And then we're gonna open this size option here. And you're first going to notice that this cube came in and the X, Y, Z size on this is set to two. So if you import any models into ZBrush, your size is probably always going to equal two in the global X, Y, Z size. Now two is the size inside of ZBrush for your mesh that all your brushes and everything inside of ZBrush are gonna work the best at. So that's why if you ever import anything in, you're gonna notice your size is probably always going to be two. Now this size is going to stay constant. So you can see this box here that I imported in at that 127 came in with that XYZ size of two. Now let me import in the other one. And this is the one that was sent out of max in that generic units of inches. So this was five in each dimension. And you're gonna notice here under the geometry tab here that the size is also set to two. So if you look at both these models and it's clicking back and forth between them, you're gonna see no change. Now the change is going to occur in the export options down here. So you can see the scale of this one that was sent out at the 127 generic units is now set to 63.5. If I select the one that was sent out at the five generic units and go to the export scale, you're gonna see the scale for this one is 2.5. So you may already see what's going on here, but your size multiplied by your scale is going to give you the value of those generic units when you export that file out as an OBJ. So here, let's go over the uh, math quick here. So the tool geometry and whatever X, Y, or Z size you have times that export scale is going to give you your value. So as we saw here, if I have a size of two and my export scale was that 63.5, it's going to generate 127 generic units. So if I imported this file in after I exported it into a application that system units were set to millimeters, I'm gonna get 127 millimeters. If I export this out and import it into an application that system unit is inches, 
I'm going to get 127 inches. So it's all based around this generic unit kind of format. So let's say I have a box here, one of these cubes, and I want to set it to be a specific size. So to get a specific size, we just need to find out what value we want. Then we need to divide that value by your tool geometry size. And then we need to adjust the export scale. So if I go back to this 127 millimeter cube here, and let's say I change my size inside a ZBrush here to say something like 3.5. So now you can see this cube is a little bit bigger and I have a 3.5 value in my global X, Y, and Z. So if I take this 3.5 value and I multiply it by my export scale, which is 63.5, I'm gonna end up with something around 222 units, generic units. So let's say I wanna take this cube here and I want to export it out at 10 inches and the application I want to import it into has a system units of millimeters. So what do I need to do to get this cube out? So when I go to that file export OBJ, it's gonna export that out in those millimeters that equals 10 inches. So first we need to do some math here. So we're gonna open our math thing here and we first need to find out what 10 inches is in millimeters. So the conversion for this is basically just need to take whatever inch value you have and multiply it by 25.4. So 10 inches times 25.4 is gonna give you 254 millimeters. So that is going to give you that 10 inch value in the millimeter format. So now that I have this value, I can now do my math calculation here to determine what I need to change my export scale to so that I can export this model out at the 254 units. So here is the math conversion for that. So we just need to take the value that we want, which is 254. We need to divide it by our XYZ size. So over here you can see that we change this to 3.5, so we're gonna do 254 divided by 3.5, and we're gonna value of around 72.57. So this value right here is the new export scale we need to set. So I just need to go back to ZBrush, and then in the export area over here, I just need to change the scale option to that value, so the 72.57, so type in 72.57. So now this export scale multiplied by these XYZ sizes here is going to give us that value. So now if I go up to the top here and simply export this out, and now I'm gonna open that OBJ up in a text editor here, you're gonna see that my scale values are set to that corresponding size. So that is how the export scale works with the XYZ size. So if you ever bring anything in and you're wondering why the size value is always two, it's because it's multiplying this size by the export scale value here, and then it's giving you that generic units. And also just remember that anytime you export or generate an OBJ or an STL, it's all going to have those arbitrary units in it. So there's no units of measurement inside that file format. So just make sure you know which system unit scale your application you want to import or export a file into has, and then it's going to make this process a little bit easier. So that is the quick rundown on the export scale. If you have any other additional questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.